Okay, so Richard, what's the main difference between BIM and Open BIM? So the key thing about Open BIM is the um, interoperable nature of Open BIM, the ability to share data with other actors and players. Really important thing about that is that it allows users and clients to control their digital destiny. And uh, I guess what's really sort of novel at the moment is that um, really the, with the advances that we're able to bring in, let's say, open interoperable formats, anything is now possible. Uh, Aidan, um, why should we prefer uh, open BIM instead of closed BIM? Yeah, it's a very good question. I think it really comes back down to the end users and their experience about working with international standards that we're developing. Um, we, we require that the industry is um, reducing inefficiencies and waste within the industry. And, and to do that, we believe that Open BIM is a fundamental key component of that because it, as Richard said, it provides um, endless opportunities for end users to maximise their potential with the projects and assets they're working with. And what are the advantages and disadvantages between Open BIM compared to BIM or closed BIM? Well, we've sort of described it that it's a collaborative process that is supported by technology, essentially. And actually, Open BIM really extends the value of BIM. There's still value in creating 3D design models and using them for later phases of the workflow. But Open BIM really extends that value and makes it more collaborative and brings everybody together on the project or asset, as mentioned. So the, the real advantages there are that we um, provide more seamless workflows, more access to data, and um, more possibilities, as mentioned, you know, really demonstrated by Hacker here that anything is possible and that we can, we can deliver that uh, through innovative software. Leon, um, what is an open data format and what would you highlight as the essential requirements? In its simplest form, an open data format is a set of agreements on how we are going to exchange data. Like Aidan said, there's a, there's a lot of actors in the construction industry, they need to collaborate they may need to make agreements on how are we going to exchange data, how are we going to call things, how are we going to structure that data for the workflows to be efficient. I think the most important feature of an open data standard is that it has almost no thresholds, that it is accessible for everyone, every kind of software vendor should be able to implement it. So it really um, levels the playing field for all software vendors to compete on features instead of uh, competing with the lock-in. Yeah, sure. Aidan, uh, how do you consider BSI's collaboration with ACA? Well, so far is a good way to describe it because we feel that this is a long journey together with our members and our partners and uh, ACA really are an exemplary um, you know, partner that we, sh we share a really great relationship with because they support us and um, with that, can I say us and the community um, in uh, helping to develop international standards like the 4.3 they apply their technology to extending that and to um, enabling other workflows within that. We've seen examples of how they enrich data with the Building Smart Data Dictionary, the BSDD, and other classification systems. And even developing really innovative things like digital twins with built off of the IFC 4.3 um, schema and applying things like IoT sensors to, to bridges to real projects. It's pretty exciting. So, um, we see that not only are they developing it within their software and their platforms, but also the, fundamentally the relationships that we build here. And this is why we're here, is to, is to learn more about the technologies and build relationships, because uh, that's part of what makes Building Smart really good. Yeah, excellent. Um, Leon, <laughs> next question to Leon. What values do you think ACA has been able to bring to the BSI technical tables? I think ACA has been instrumental to, um, to, to fine-tuning and improving the quality of uh, multiple standards. So IFC 4.3 is, uh, is one of the most recent and important ones. Um, so ACA has been really um, uh, pushing the quality and the control and the checks and making sure that um, the standard is useful in practice as well. But they're also doing that for other standards and for the integration between standards and services. So ACA is really a, a front-runner in uh, adopting and, uh, and testing the standards to make sure that they're fit for purpose and, and work in practice. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have Richard. Uh, you've taken a tour of our headquarters. 
What do you think of it? First impression is what a beautiful location set amongst the Italian hills. Yeah. And then you see the building and you walk in and it starts to unravel itself to you bit by bit. And first thing you notice is the sense of space and, and light. And then you realise that actually the components it's been made with are really high quality. So it's triple glaze, it's got modular panel insulation. And then you notice the solar panels, then you notice other things, other aspects of the building, such as the way it's been designed to harvest the water for watering all these plants that are in each and every office. Um, and, and, and provide water for some of the utilities as well. And you realise that this has been designed using BIM, possibly using open BIM, and the decisions that were made at that design phase, some of them were quite brave and you wouldn't get in a traditional building, but it's been made possible because the information was available to make those brave decisions to say, we are going to use these different materials, we are going to incorporate lots of different devices in the building to make it a, a more uh, livable and, and working space. So it's a really good example, actually, of the sort of living space, working space we can have in the future if we use open BIM sharing of information for design and then for the construction. Yeah, sure. And Aidan, what do you think of our product? Yeah, I mean, I'm very impressed. I think um, what I what I've most appreciated about looking at some of these products is not only the attention, but the um, the intent of the way that they're developed. Um, not only in the uh, aesthetics, which I really enjoy, um, the meaning behind what they're trying to achieve, and um, also aligned to open standards. You know, um, on top of the excellent technology provided. So, what I think that the differentiator for me is that actually they're making it open to, to everybody to use at a sort of affordable rate for people which is hugely important for the industry because we, we do need that element for the community. And um, yeah, of course they have um, easy to use interfaces, but behind it's very clever technology. So hugely impressed, uh, very inspired and uh, looking forward to learning more about some of the future products that you're gonna be developing. Sure. And then Richard again, um, you've also seen a few of our work environments too. What do you think of the various activities that we cover here at ACA? So that's been interesting as well. The um, building industry is, of course, uh, very multifunctional. Lots of different trades. You have the engineers, you have the architects, you have all sorts of other designers and builders. And the way that the um, office complex is set up, it's easy to see how the different domains and different trades are being supported, but also how the, um, the sharing the, the exchange requirements that are needed between each of the different trades is able to be enabled by the way that the all the different uh, specialists you know, in this in this building are able to operate sure. together as well as concentrate on the aspects that need to be concentrated on for those particular users okay, okay. thank you very much for your uh, for your time this morning and uh, hope to have you here again maybe soon okay thank you Thank, Thank you very much. much.